No, it just pops right back. Day four of oversharing. So I used to be in sales at, why does it say 34 minutes? I guess I only get 34 minutes. I'm running out of storage. Day four of oversharing. Or is it day five? I used to work at this place called Frito Lay. Uh, it was a pretty good job. Uh, they paid pretty well. I mean, like, pretty well. Like, your starting pay was 40k uh, as a sales rep. Um, back when they were sales reps. They're not sales reps anymore. They're hourly employees uh, with less benefits because of that. Slightly less benefits. Uh, and less pay. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. Today's topic is racism in the workplace. Why do I not have a light on me? Oh, because it looks crazy if I have a light on me. Today's topic is racism in the workplace. I used to have this manager named Robert Mel. Let's just call him Robert Mel, because I don't want him reaching out to a lawyer and trying to fucking sue me for telling the truth. Uh, anyway, so Robert Mel was a Latino fellow, but if you looked at him, you would be, it'd be okay to mistake him for an Italian guy. He looked like Mario from like Mario and Luigi. Back when I first started at this company, I was a rookie and I didn't quite have my feet underneath me. And in sales at Frito Lay, your job is literally like putting product in the store and trying to put as much product in the store and convince these uh, customers, uh, the customers are the stores, not the consumer, the consumer is the consumer, uh, to take as much of your product as, as possible, more than they need, fill their back shelves. So this was... Uh, about nine, ten, almost nine plus years ago when I first started there, uh, there was a, a white guy, older white guy, veteran. He had been, not veteran, veteran, maybe, I don't know, but veteran of Frito-Lay. He had been working there so many years. He just, he was in, he was in, what's it called, senioritis when you're in high school and you just don't care. It's your last three months. You already applied to colleges. You've passed all your classes. You just walk around with the air. I don't give a fool. So and this white guy was about to quit give you an idea what he looks like gray goatee always wore a kango bigger heavier set individual he would just go into stores throwing product he doesn't care how much product he brings in he's not rotating the old product to the front and the new product to the back so that you don't cause a stale issue stales are when the chips go out of date and each each bag of chips is a potential firing um because the city inspectors, if they were to go in the stores and find out-of-date product, they can find the customer uh, up to like $400 each ex expiration. And if you got like 10 of those in the store, that store can get closed down by the city. Because of that, we guarantee our service as sales reps to man maintain and manage this product that we're in the store. All of that, just to say this. I was covering his route while he was going on vacation, and he was actually about to leave three months after. He went He went and took all his vacation so he could just slowly retire. I'm covering his route, and I'm finding a bunch of stale. He didn't do his job for at least the last two years. I was finding bags of chips from, like, a year and a half ago. Like, you can tell because bags of chips update every couple of months, maybe every year you get a new version of the bag, and they come up with new brands of chips etc etc so i was finding t i he had like 17 stores he might have had a thousand dollars worth of stales and this is back when chips were cheaper you can get four bags of chips for a dollar so if you're doing the math that's a lot of that's a lot of chips um that's a lot of bags of product that are stale in the store so i was doing my best on this route and i had this manager named M Robert M. Robert Mel, uh, and he did not like me. Um, he he clearly didn't like me. He would follow me around and tell me how everything I was doing was wrong, and then he would threaten to write me up. Now again, I'm a rookie. I hadn't been there more than maybe six months, seven months, uh, and he was just a thorn in my side, uh, following me around from store to store. Like I could tell he was in the stores. If I'm on a route for a week, I might visit. 
one of those 16 stores, like several of those stores I would go to multiple times. It's not just one store a week. You would go there on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'd come back on a Wednesday and the manager at the store would tell me, hey, your boss was in here. He was checking behind you. He's asking me questions about you. I'm like, Jesus, this guy's got it out for me. So anyway, he found a few bags of stales that I had missed. Again, this is not my route. And I had found maybe a thousand bags of stales. And when you're in the stores, you get your little computer, you scan the bags, you print it up, you do all your paperwork. I had proof that I had caught maybe 250 plus, 300 plus bags of credit in the store. And some of those bags go back over a year. And because I was taught to cover my ass, I took pictures. So... Robert Mel calls me up one day and he says, uh, Hey, I want to, uh, I want to speak with you. Where, which store are you at? I got to come see you. And this is a bad sign. When you're in your stores, when you're in your market and you're in sales, managers aren't supposed to call you. They're supposed to let you do your job. You come back to the warehouse. You see them at the end of the day. He came to see me. So I knew it was bad right off the bat. I knew it was bad. Well, he comes out to see me and he tells me that he shows me a picture of three bags of Lay's medium sized family bags. They're not the big family bags. They were like the $3 and 20 cent family bags. Uh, he finds three of them in a Walmart or a Walgreens. He says, yeah, look, I can write you up for this. He was actually training a new manager at the time, a black guy. Uh, and he was trying to show him the ropes on how you're supposed to come down on the employee, you know, the workers, the worker bees. You gotta, you gotta, uh, assert your authority over them at all times, just so they know you're the boss. When they, when they have questions, they don't want to bother you. Just leave me alone. I'm the boss. So he was showing this black guy how to do his job. And what he was doing was using me as a cudgel. And I was not too fond of it. I explained to him, hey, you can write me up if you want to. But I've got pictures of grocery carts full. Grocery carts full to the top. Multiple carts of stales that this... I didn't say white guy, but I said this other guy left. And if you write me up, you're going to have to fire him because I've got, he, I've got grocery carts full of, it and I've got proof. I've got pictures of the dates. Each bag has a date on it. And I said, w do you want to see them? So I tried to hand him my phone. Like, you want to see them? Tell me why Robert Mel said, no, 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 I don't want to see it. I don't need to see it. I'm just coming out here to tell you, you're going to make sure to do your job. It's like, no, I was doing my job, and I was doing his job. He clearly hasn't been doing his job for the last year and a half. He kept refusing to look at the photos. And then at one point, I look at the black, and I'm like, do you see this, brother? You see this shit? You see this motherfucking bullshit? And the black guy kind of looked down sheepish, like, yeah, I'm not supposed to fraternize. You're fucking the worker bees. So after I after I unsuccessfully tried to show him this uh the photo, the photos of like a thousand dollars worth of stales. I said, Hey man, what is your uh, email? I will email them to you. So there's a paper trail. Cause if you write me up, you have to fire this white guy. And I literally said that you have to fire this white guy. And he's like, oh, it's not a brown ranch. I'm like, okay, Bob, tell me why I come to find out over the next couple of years that Robert Mel only writes up black people. How did I find this out? Started talking to my co-workers. Robert Mel only writes up black people. And Robert Mel was a Latino Puerto Rican fellow who identified as non-Puerto Rican. For whatever the fuck that means. And I just wanted to do a, a thought process, like a little brain experiment. If you were to go into corporate America and you were specifically Frito-Lay and you were to grab a pie chart demographic wise... How many of those people who are getting written up are Caucasian? And how many of those people, sliver by sliver, are black, Mexican, Latino, Asian, uh, Arab? How many of those people are non-white? And come to find out over like literally nine years of working at this place, uh, pretty much everyone who gets written up is black. Pretty much. You have to do some pretty bad shit to get written up if you're white. They fired one white guy for leaving his keys in his truck, and then his truck got stolen. His Frito-Lay truck was stolen. He left his doors unlocked and the keys in the ignition. They fired him, and then they, <coughs> and then they brought him back. And the reasoning there was, well, we don't know if he actually left his keys in his truck. So, you think there's some master, master locksmiths in the ghetto? We were in the ghetto. 
and they're just breaking into the truck to steal the truck but they're master locksmiths why aren't they breaking into banks and vaults and shit like so corporate racism is a thing and it fucking sucks <laughs>